Hello again, Jules fans. Welcome back to the latest episode of Jules in the Blood TV. It is Sunday, which means it is match day review showtime. And we have pretty much everything to get through this week after Saturday's one-all draw with Nigel Clough's Mansfield Town, who remain unbeaten and sit one place below us still in the Skybet League 2 table. As always, we have the company of Reese from German Jules. And I'm pleased to say that this week, to give us a Stags perspective, we are joined from Clive. Uh, by Clive, sorry, from the Mansfield Matters podcast, which is a weekly Mansfield Town podcast. I will put the description down the bottom at the end of this video so you can go and give them a follow and get their thoughts on one decision particularly, which I'm sure we will talk about in length. But um, I just want to say before we get into the, the episode, a big thank you to the Jills, a big thank you to the Mansfield fans as well, because I thought the tribute yesterday to Kane and Odell was absolutely impeccably um, um, carried out by both sets of fans. The round of applause and the, the rendition of the last waltz at the end of that minute's applause. I think that was a wonderful honour to a Jules fan who we've already said over the last week or so was taken away from us far too soon. Um, but back to matters in hand. I've written down before we get into the nitty gritty and, and the timeline, a proper game between two sides only intent on winning the football match who for me will be there or thereabouts come May, based on what we saw yesterday. Clive, I'll come to you first. Do you think that is a fair assessment of the 90 minutes that we saw yesterday afternoon? Yeah, pretty spot on. I think both teams came to play. Neither team deserved to lose. Um, controversy around one in particular decision, but that happens. Um, you know, We'll see it differently, obviously, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll it, doesn't, doesn't care. it doesn't matter what we think, does it? <laughs> Unfortunately not, no. It's, it's the one in the middle that, that, that counts and we we'll, we'll, we will get to that, obviously. Reese, uh, in terms of the ninety minutes of football, it was. I think we again we come out of the ground and we said if if you was a neutral, you'd have had a bloody good afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. I think, <laughs> yeah, and I think that's a testament to the to the two teams that are on the pitch. Actually, the fact that you know we both teams went out to try and get something from the game and ultimately ended up with something from the game. And I think that's you know, as a neutral uh, uh, perspective, you would have really enjoyed what unfolded on the pitch uh, throughout the whole game, actually, not just one half. As generally, the whole game was, I think, quite exciting, actually. It was gripping. It was, yeah. Boz was sat next to me in the match day live and he kept smiling. I was like, what are you smiling at? This is too nervous for me. I don't like this. The game's too open at one. I've got horrible feet. I kept saying there's a goal in this, but I'm not confident it was for us after when Mansfield had that really good spell. He kept going, this is brilliant. This is this is what we should be watching. This is what we want Jules to be. And I said, yeah, I'll get your point, but I'd have rather been enjoying it 3 and up. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> um, team news. Two o'clock came in. There were two changes for the Jules. Um, Johnny Williams and Dom Jeffries, both maybe somewhat surprisingly, returned to the 11 after illness and injury, respectively. So Jules lined up in that familiar 4-2-3-1 after a little move away from that last week due to Plenty of absentee. So it was Jake Turner in goal. It was that similar back four. Sorry, that same familiar back four of Shay Alexander, Connor Masterson, Shad Ogie and Scotty Malone. The captain was Sean Williams next to Ethan Coleman. And then it was Johnny, Dom and Connor Mahoney flanking lone frontman Macaulay Bond, who at kickoff was still awaiting his first goal in a Gillingham shirt for the Stags. Similar formation, just a little tweak on it. It looked like a 4-3-1-2 and that was Pim in goal. Bowery, Flint, Brunt and McDonald making up that back four. A midfield trio of Lewis, Reed, and Clark. And then it was Keylor Dunn supporting a front two of Maris and Aitkins. No real surprises, Clive, with the team for you. I spoke to um, Sam, who runs the, the Mansfield Musings um, Twitter page for the, the preview show. And he said it was only likely that there'd only be one or two changes um, maximum for you guys. Yeah, neither of the players that you've cited as being our front pairing are actually strikers, in, in essence. I mean, Maris is a, a, a defensive midfielder, um, but he can he can shoot. Mm -hmm. and, and the big lad, uh, Aikens, he's a utility player now. Mm -hmm. he, and bless him, he'll play wherever Clough puts him. Um, he never looks as, as if he's got any pace, but that's a, his style. He gets to it. He gets there without appearing to be running. But it's very languid, he, I think, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, ponderous and languid. But he, um, I mean, we 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 didn't have and we haven't had this season uh, an out and out striker on form and available to us. Our key strikers, in, one of the long term injured, um, Keeler Dunn tends to normally sit behind the the, the front pairing anyway, um, but he's he's our leading scorer this season, and of course. He scored the wonderful goal yesterday. The, um, the, the so we we were, I don't think Clough had an awful lot of choice because of the injury situation. When you saw what we got, if we needed any more any more on the bench, you'd have to invade the youth team. 
um, which is, I suppose, encouraging given that we're playing so well and doing, you know, we're undefeated this season, mm -hmm. to be in that position despite the problems we're having with, with available staff. That's it, yeah. And if you can get, I know you said a lot of them are, are season long, unfortunately, but if there's some in there that you can get back uh, for the second half of the campaign or even the running, if you're still there or thereabouts, that could prove. Yeah, I think we're going to end, we'll probably end up having to get somebody in January. Hmm. Yeah, it makes sense, obviously, if, especially if you're in and around the top seven, you want to you want to make sure that you stay in and around the top seven, don't you? So, um, right, let's get into the nitty gritty of the game and we'll go through the timeline. Um, Town won a corner after literally 15 seconds. And I, I was sat in the ground. I was like, I'm not sure what's happened here. It was just a long, I think a long punt forward from Aidan Flint, usually the norm in this division. Ball goes back to a centre half and they play a diagonal. Shay Alexander, for me, Reese, I'm not sure what your view was from from my follow perspective. It just looked like he lost his bearings. He seemed to sort of run around underneath it a little while and then had to just edit out quite tamely. Could have maybe got a shout from someone, but it wasn't an ideal start. But but luckily we defended the corner okay. Yeah, I mean, it's what happens at the start of games like that. If you get under pressure very quickly, you've got to make a decision that early. Quite often it ends up in some form of mistake because you're asked, you're called to duty pretty quickly. And if you're not mm. adequately warmed up or even mentally warmed up, that kind of thing can happen. So I think that's what happened right at the start of the game yesterday. And you talk of you talk of errors and people potentially not being mentally switched on. I think it was the lad uh, Brunt, two minutes mm. later tried to play out from the back, didn't have a great touch, almost overran it, and then tried to flick it around Conor Mahoney, who managed to nick the ball, run into space that was vacated by Brunt. He does really well. He gets his head up early. Macaulay Bond just sort of holds that run to the edge of the six-yard box. Thought it was a really smart finish from Macaulay Bond, considering we've seen a player that's done everything but net so far. Um, controlled finish, could have lashed at it, but side foot, Christy Pym, no chance. Um, no complaints from you, I assume. Uh, Clive, it was it was just one of them that's an individual error, and we picked up on it and punished it really well. Yeah, you did everything right. Uh, we um, and, and we're not in the blame culture here, but the young lad that gave the ball, that gifted the ball, um, he, he's on loan to us mm -hmm. from Leicester City on for the season. He is a young lad. Mm -hmm. He's got mistakes in him, and this is not the first time he's done this. Um, but I thought he after they, that he, he he grew into his game, and 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 you wouldn't have known it was. Uh, so uh, new and, and raw, but he's only in our team because at what the the central defender we were building our team around, Alfie Kilgore, is one of those long term injured. You know, he snapped his uh, Achilles, so he's 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 not going to be seen again this season. So we had to do something, and, and we, uh, this this guy's a lone player, and you get what you get. You know, that's it. Yeah, but, that's the risk you take. But he has you bring him. he has got Flint alongside him, who was, who was a monster yesterday. And I think if you've got the right partner, you can bring these players through. Oh, yeah, because in terms of experience and leadership, Aidan Flint, there's probably not many better around, certainly in League Two. And I dare I say it could probably do a job still in League One comfortably. Absolutely. I was surprised we got him, to be honest. Uh, someone, I think some, I think it was Sam against just referring back to the, the preview show, said there was a lot lot to do with location because he lives quite near to, yeah. to where you're based, which I think generally helps. I'm, I'm a really big fan in trying to get players to play from where their roots are. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that was influential in, in the two captives of ours that you got last season. And both oh, absolutely. Southern yeah, lads yeah. And, and obviously you've, you've waved a bit of money at them. But the because uh, 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 neither of them wanted to leave the club for any reason other than it was in their financial best interest to do so. Um, and obviously you, you're able to give Mansfield Town Football Club a few thousand quid as well, which mm -hmm. swe sweetened the disappointment. Uh, but we had to reconstruct after that. You know, these things happen, don't they? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, and after that, we had another chance, Reese. We were we were massively on top, I think, mm. up until the talking point that we will get to. I thought we were very, very good. We, Mansfield couldn't get out. They couldn't get the ball. If they did have it, they was either hacking it out for throw-ins or just clearing it long, and we were sweeping up and defending it fairly comfortably. <clears throat> I think this was a, this was more good play from the Jills rather than the Mansfield gifting us possession or anything like that. I think we worked it well down our right-hand side. Dom Jeffries, who started maybe surprisingly as the 10 rather than from the left and maybe Johnny Williams inside. He sort of made himself available in space on the right-hand side of the box. And again, Macaulay Bond's run is intelligent, goes into the danger area and then just steps away, gets found. It's a great hit. It's a great save from Christy Pym, getting his hands up to his left and, and forcing it away for a corner. You look back now with a little frustration because I think if that goes in, Jill's probably win the game comfortably. But credit to, to Mansfield and, and to Pym in particular for making a really good stop. No, I, I just want to say, yeah, it was it was nice actually after we scored because I think that's one of the things we we, we kind of struggle in this season. We, if we go ahead, 
uh, I'm always we always want to get a second to kind of have, uh, to build that cushion. I, I feel like we we seem to be struggling to do that a lot this uh, so far this season. I mean, we scored two against Morecambe, but but yeah, it's uh, it was nice that we 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 had the intent and we were creating opportunities again to try and get a second. And and you know, I thought we were a little bit unfortunate not to find the second. Actually, if mm-hmm. it wasn't for Pim, I thought Pim had a decent game yesterday. Actually, all things considered, uh, but I it, but it was uh, yeah, it was nice. And, and and I thought in the final third we 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 were showing the elements of creativity again, which we had said at the start of the season we seem to be lacking. But actually, I think w- w- the team. Up the top, I had the, uh, so much more chemistry now that it seems to be working. And with the introduction of Dom Jeffries back into the team, I think that only bolstered that uh, more as well. So it was nice that we were pushing on and trying to create something. And uh, we, I, I thought we were a little bit unfortunate not to find the back of the net to double our advantage, actually. Yeah, because after that, I think there was another half chance. So the chance did keep coming. Another opportunity, I think, was a ball in from the right, excuse me. I think it fell to Sean Williams. And, and we was right behind it, albeit a long way away. Connection looked really good, though, like it was heading Gull Woods and on target. And I think Flint makes a big block. From your mm-hmm. point of view, Clive, you must have been fairly concerned sort of first 10, 15 minutes. Because, like I say, you, you didn't seem to be able to get out. And it was just wave after a wave of duels getting into good areas and, and forcing blocks and saves. Yeah, uh, I, we weren't making any progress and you guys were on top. And I think uh, it's also a measure of a decent side that can co- can live with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and putting yeah, bodies absolutely. behind balls is really what, certainly at League Two level, it's all about. And both teams did it. I mean, I think both teams were very, very uh, brave where they needed to be in terms of defensive actions. But we weren't able to create anything because you guys were dominating. Now, I think Clough would argue that that was a part of the phase of the game he expected anyway. And that part of his strategy is to deal with that. And then, as we believe, we're fit enough to to prosper later in the game. And I think we did. Mm -hmm. Um, That that can work, but you've still got to keep the ball out of the uh, the onion bag. And I think... uh, the first, the opening goal was horrible, but at least in the second minute, you've got 88 more minutes to deal with it, haven't you? I hate, hate conceding goals right at the end, and I thought we would do it at one point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I, I thought point. Uh, when with your team was announced and, and the old uh, Johnny uh, Williams little rat came out, I thought, <laughs> this bloke, he, every time I've seen him play against the Stags, he's ruined our game. And uh, I thought he had a really good session until his legs ran out. Yeah, he was another one that was coming back from me when he seen Miss Doncaster last week, which forced that change of shape. So I think him and Jeffries were, were basically only ever going to get sort of 60, 65 minutes. And so it panned out. I mean, a couple um, of your players were absolutely <laughs> running on gas fumes at the end. In fact, at the final whistle, there was a great collapse of blue shirts on the pitch. Mm-hmm. Some of that would have been frustration, I'm sure. But I think they gave everything they got. Yeah, I think I think that's that's the same for both teams. Like we said right at the beginning, it was two sides that were only intent on winning it right up to the final whistle as well. There didn't seem any sort of lull in the final sort of period of injury time where teams went right, we're settled. It was both teams trying to go and get three points. Well, I, I mean, in our case, top. Clough threw his two strikers on at that point. You know, it didn't settle for the point. I mean, it, yeah, and similar to I mean, don't get me wrong, we didn't want to concede the point because it's important to, if you've got a, a winning, a non-losing run to maintain it. But um, it wasn't. We, we're not the sort of team that will take a draw and sit on it. It's just not us at all. I, I, and I said that before the game. I thought that might help us, and, and it did in the sense that you'd want to play, so then it would give us more openings as well. And I think that was the case for both sides, Reese. That. Both teams were so intent on trying to get into dangerous areas that they they did keep leaving the the back door open, so to speak. Yeah, it, it, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's that's what happens when you when you have an open game. Your defence has to work a lot harder to try and keep the ball out as a result. And we saw that we've, we've seen that previously in other games when if it, you know <laughs> if you try and hold tight at the back, actually it's not an open game whatsoever. But both of the, both teams came in as we said already. It's to come and win the game. So of course you're going to get an open game that's going to you know either end to end. Some teams are going to dominate for 30 minutes in in, in your all half and then vice versa. It's just that yeah. kind of, and like we said, it alludes to the fact that it's great for the neutral from that perspective. But for us fans, when we're supporting one one of the teams, it's a little bit more of a stressful experience. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Mansfield's problem is a lack of pace up front uh, because our, our key striker's injured and he's the he's the, uh, he's the express train. Um, and um, without him, uh, we lack that opportunity to to break away from defensive situations uh, at a pace. So we have to play everything up. Now, on one hand, it's good to see players confident enough to play out from back all the time. But it, as a traditionalist, it worries me. I think there are times when you just want to root one. Uh, and somebody to chase the ball, and we 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 didn't have that. We haven't had it for a little a little while now. So we've had to find other ways around it. And you know, it's no surprise that you know our leading goal scorer is ostensibly a midfielder. 
Yeah, but you are finding ways, like you say, because mm. you're unbeaten in all competitions. Yeah. It's, it's been and a we, really good and, start. In the second half, we made uh, four really decent opportunities. If anything, oh, yeah. we should be Absolutely. should have been disappointed we didn't get one of them. I thought your keeper had a splendid save against Keeler Dunn when he, yep. he was there was only him left uh, and he went down and and, and squashed it. It was marvellous. I think he's a good keeper, yours. I don't know what's what's his name. Jake Turner. Yeah, we got him yeah. in last summer and he's he's had to play second fiddle to to Glenn Morris, but. It became no. very apparent that he's he's a good keeper. He never lets down. Well, he's got he's got the presence, he's got the height, and and he, and he seems very confident. Which you can't yeah. ask for much more, really. No, exactly. And then it's just that, <laughs> that case of, of learning with with more games and more experience. Um, we've spoken about both teams putting their bodies on the line and that type of thing, and 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 certainly Mansfield did it first half hour, and, and I think Jules did it for a good twenty five minutes second half. Um, but we always knew that the Stags were going to have a spell recently. Their first chance, Julie came. I think it was a corner that got played in from Maris um, from their left-hand side. And, and Aikens made a good run to the near post, flicked a header that drifted just wide of the far mm. post. Luckily, no one was at that back post to, to nod it in. But that was the warning that at 1-0, the game was never done. Um, I think we then had another big chance. And similar to last week, when we speak about the Bond and the Masterson chances at Doncaster at key times, Conor Masterson just leans back at the wrong time again, doesn't he? He's yeah. sort of middle of the goal, eight yards out. I know there's bodies in front of him, but he just got to hit the target. Then a deflection or anything happens. But unfortunately, he's a centre-half. He leant back and, and the ball <laughs> ended up in that famous Brian Moore stand that, that Clive absolutely loves. <laughs> yeah, hey, I mean, you had another one went over the lid of the other stand as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, did, yeah. Yeah. You, were, you were doing rocket science, I think, yesterday. <laughs> it's, good, it's a good that, effort to get it over that rain of yeah, To be fair, it was very well. impressive. That, yeah, that was that. That for me was was the funniest moment of the season so far when OG blasted that one. I think I think went beyond rain and actually itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure where it ended up. Yeah, but it certainly cleared the stand. It might a not have come down on top yeah. as it disappeared. Yeah, I heard it thud on the top of it, and I'm not. But I'm, yeah. I'm assuming it still kept bouncing that way. <laughs> um, the big talking point now. <laughs> which they take up quite a lot of the episode. I want to say my version of it, and then we'll let you two pitch in. At the time, from my view, I didn't think it was a foul. I thought it was soft. Having seen the highlights, Ethan Carman gets hold of the shirt, so I've got no issue with it being a free kick. Is it a professional foul? Probably. So do I have an issue with the yellow card? Probably not. If it's the other way round, I'm probably screaming caution. Now to the bits where I have a massive issue with the referee. And again, this isn't on Mansfield. I've got no issue with Mansfield. They want to chance their arm. They want to try and take a quick free kick. Teams do it all the time. No problem at all. But for me, and the rules state, bear with me two seconds. Once the ref has decided to caution a player, Play must not be restarted until the sanction has been administered unless the non-offending team has taken a quick free kick, has a clear scoring opportunity, or the ref has not started disciplinary sanction procedure. So, yes, they've got a goal-scoring opportunity. Yes, they tried to take a quick free kick. But the key point for me here, Reese, the referee clearly has motioned for Ethan Coleman to come towards him. And he's got his card out in his right hand. So he's going to book the player. So for me, that constitutes disciplinary procedure having started. From that point on, the game should not be allowed to continue. And that goal should not be allowed to stand, in my opinion. Agree or disagree? 100% agree. Um, now, it's uh, people who have watched us before, I'm quite supportive of referees. And I, I know mm -hmm. you do try yep, to see me. I'm yep. usually quite supportive of that. And... Um, and as a result, it means that occasionally I'm I'm quite comfortable going against a complete de a decision which I think is completely wrong, and this is one of them. And mm -hmm. it might be the only one this season, but I think the referee has created a situation here that was completely unavoidable. Completely unavoidable. He didn't need to do this. I just I he's made a. Com it's not even like an opinion based thing where it's like, no. oh, is it yes? Is it no? Is it great? It's a rule. It's like, a law within is, the game. This is a law in the game, and. And people might argue, well, did the referee call the call the player over to book him? But said, that doesn't matter. The body language suggests if he has the card out, the procedure has begun. What else are you going to do with that card in his hand? Nothing else. Exactly. <laughs> and if you watch the highlights back, Clive, and I'm going to come to you now because I know you're probably going to have a slightly different opinion, which is absolutely fine. <clears throat> but you can see the referee and your and I think when I watched the um 
some of the match replay this morning. It was the Mansfield commentary team. They said that they thought the referee had the spray out. It's clearly not spray. It's definitely a yellow card. And then he quickly tries to get it back in his pocket as he runs on with the play. There's also the question about where the free kick is taken, because it looks like it's a good six yards or so further from where the foul has been committed. I'm going to ask for your view, and I, I've got an idea of what you're going to say. But for me, there's there's so much wrong with that period of refereeing. I thought he got it wrong. <clears throat> um, referees make mistakes, you know. Oh, and, absolutely. Uh, I understand oh, yeah. that. I, and I'm an ex-referee myself, and I would hate to be refereeing with today's circumstance. Mm-hmm. I mean, referees are being almost on a monthly basis uh, required to change interpretations and to come up with different emphases. Um, at the moment, one of the things the referees have been pushed to do is to encourage immediate restarts from after a foul, and which is what Mansfield did. And I thought, having looked at the replay, well, I, I was at the wrong end of the ground to be thoroughly uh, uh, aware of what was going on. But I looked on, and it looked to me like we did make, that our player did make sufficient communicative contact with the referee to gain sanction to restart. Well, that's fine. Um, but but that's me, not your argument. Yellow, I know that's not yeah, your argument. The your argument is out, he'd the started a process side. which yeah. should have not enabled that to happen. Yeah. This this referee had a poor game. Um, he's a new referee at this level. And I thought he lost it fairly early in the game. And it could have turned out a lot worse from a disciplinary point of view because he, at one point it looked like it, you know, we were going to have players off because mm-hmm. it became a little bit tetchy. But, you know, it happens in football. If I'd have been you, uh, a fan of the Jills, I'd have had exactly the same frustration as, as I'm guessing 99 point something percent of your fans have. Um, we, we will take it because quite clearly we get the other end of the stick on our occasions as well. Oh, yeah, uh, I get it. And it, it, and comes, it really it has to be swings around, 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 doesn't that, it? Yeah, yeah. To a degree. But... But, it, but the referee got it wrong on a technicality. You say it's a law, but yes, it's a technical law at the end of the day. Yeah. And, and and laws either allow for interpretation or not. And this one doesn't, and he interpreted, I think. That was probably the, the problem. But, you, you know, it added, it added to the excitement because I think the, the goal actually made the game rather than destroyed it. Both teams, to both, teams had to, <laughs> both teams needed to adopt a very much more attacking stance. Because um, we were... I'll disagree in the sense that we were massively on top until that point. That was the huge turning point in the game for me, I thought, certainly towards the end of the half, because Jules did look like it had affected them, and understandably so, because you can see all our players have clearly stopped. They're all walking towards the referee to protest the decision. There's also something that I've not got proof of as well, so I can't say too much, but there's a lot of people that were sat in the Golden Road stand, which was the same stand that your fans were sat in, and level with the linesman in the main stand, have said that, that Keylor Dunn's even offside when the ball is played because the linesman had stopped as well and wasn't able to make the decision. Uh, I think we, we once the major problem has been addressed and identified, anything else is peripheral. I think the, the reality but it's a, is... But it's a continuation of because I mean, of I the could, referee making that roll... main decision correct, incorrectly, isn't it? I could always argue, and I do, against our team as well as anybody else's, is that if the players who were surrounding the referee in protestation had been more alert to possibilities rather than wanting to have a, a go at the referee, um, they may well not have allowed that to happen. You know, I, I get a little bit browned off, and I'm not having a go at Jules here, I get a bit browned off with a number of players that immediately there's something they're not happy with, surround the player and berate him. Now, at this point, I then blame the referee again, because the referee's always had the tools at his disposal to deal with that. Mm-hmm. And this season, they're supposed to be dealing with that. Mm-hmm. That level of dissent is supposed to be squashed with a card. And he had the opportunity to do that. I think he was in a, he was in a, a strange place while all this was happening, and um, and I think you know he was a bit out of his depth. I think, if, if I'm being honest, Massive, massively. Yeah, mm. uh, he can only he can only grow into your into your um, abilities, and I think possibly he's a little bit, uh, you know, he's been promoted a little bit too quickly, possibly. But you know, we've seen him for for ninety minutes or so, haven't we? I don't know what his other games have been like. There's an assessor in the stand for every game. They have to make judgmental decisions about the quality of the referee. Uh, you know, I've, I just say this season. I actually, I'm, I'm going to be careful what I say here because it'll it'll be damned for life. I thought this season the refereeing standard in League Two has been better than last year uh, I, because we, we have some awful referees at this level normally. Can I? Right? I want to amplify what Clive said there. I agree with that point. Actually, I do think 
from last year, I do think the stand referee has improved slightly. Genuinely, I think it's a little bit better than it has been in previous seasons. Uh, I have seen well, some, uh, and some, of, some of that. Can I just say is that the, the 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 bodies that make the the rules and and, and interpret them and then instruct the officials how to to play. I've said let play carry on. Don't whistle for every little contact, and that's made the game better. But it does require a, a referee with the intelligence to recognise what is worth blowing and what isn't worth blowing. Mm-hmm. And they don't always get it right. And, and I totally agree that they've not been helped this season. There's so many rule changes at, and it's yeah. different at different levels. And we had this chat the other week about the Morecambe centre forward got sent off for two bookings. Second one was a foul. First one he got booked for kicking the ball into the net, having been flagged offside. Yet in the Premier League the forwards encouraged to go and finish the chance. So so there's different interpretations of different rules at different levels, which I think just confuses the issue even more. So I don't think referees are helped out. So I, I, yeah, I'm happy to say that. But for me, this was this was black and white. This wasn't an opinion of the referee. It's not like, oh, I, I don't think that's a foul, but Joe Bloggs does think it's a foul. This was, he'd stopped the game and he was in the middle of a process that means that the game shouldn't have continued by the letter of the law. Yeah, which is you, my you, biggest frustration. Yeah, I think you're right on, on the basis of the law. I just think the referee in his head is trying to follow the instructions he's got to let the game flow uh, and, and made, made that error in that process. I think it was an honest error. I don't think he was doing it out of any other reason than he wanted to try and do the job as well as he was in, expected to. But it'd be interesting. We never get to see them, of course. It'd be interesting to see what the report from the uh, the guy in the stand mm. says. This is a bit you know, the years, yeah. It'd be I, nice I've, if you get a referee out and interview them. Yeah, yeah, because you get they, players they that have to become. A, no, I know they won't. But it, you have to get a manager has to come out when he's yeah. he's had a player sent off and, and reprimand them. So I, I can't see why it can't be done both ways. But like you say, it's never going to happen. No, but it isn't. And I think once we accept that it's forty six games, and in that time you're going to get a rub of the green occasionally, and not on the others, and that referees are just like us human beings. Mm-hmm. I used to referee, yeah. and I used to make mistakes, but I used to say to the players. You have a go at me when you start making mistakes and, and, and you know, let, let's play this game mm-hmm. together and, and, and move on. I mean, I have pet hates about refereeing standards. I mean, I, I think there are certain things they could deal with it in a, in a thrash, like throws mm-hmm. from the wrong place. Don't send them back. Give the other team the throw. Mm-hmm. That'll stop it happening. Same with time I mean, wasting. Don't and if you're talking about warnings. Just do it straight away and they yeah, don't and do if it you, again. If you're going to apply the laws of the game as laws of the games without interpretation, 30% of every throwing is wrong. Mm-hmm. They're just not doing it right. The schoolboy stuff, you know. And this like, is where it comes goal, back to consistency, doesn't goalkeepers it? Goalkeepers clearing the ball from outside their box. Mm. You know, oh. it's a technicality. It's legally wrong. The linesman sees it, does nothing because they're not on their instructions saying, don't worry about things like that. That's not important. And they may be right in saying it's not important, but you can't have strict adherence to rules in one place and have and no elsewhere. adherence in another place. Other, of course. So again, Reese, it comes back to consistency, doesn't it? It does. And I just want to add, the reason that this one struck a, struck a real chord on me yesterday is because uh, I had a, uh, I used to be an ex-referee, Clive, as well. And, it, and it, but the game is slightly different in 2012, but I refereed under 16 game in Yalding in the Maidstone Leagues. And this I, I, uh, my mentor was there in exactly the same situation where I blew for a free kick. I was I prepared to give a yellow card. The card was out. And then I let them take a quick free kick. Luckily, in that situation, the goal was not scored or nothing really came to anything. But afterwards... My mentor said exactly that. He's, he pretty much read that that law out to me and said, look, you started the proceedings. Your body language says you've got the card in your hand. Everyone thinks knows yeah. what you're going to do next. You can't. Yeah. You can't I, don't think just... I don't think there's any argument about that element of, of that no. phase. And I think, you know, we, we, we accept we had the rub of the green there. But I just wanna, we I also wanna, had it later in the game. The same referee, obviously. We, the second half, we brought a, a defender on um, and uh, Cargill. And within a minute, he'd done a foul down the mm. outside of the ground. The referee ran over to him, reaching for his card, and then realised the player had only just come on. And he had a conversation with him. Card went back. He had a conversation with him, tapping his watch. As if to say, okay. I got the impression that if that had been later in the game, fella, you'd have been in my book. Well, right. if it's a foul, it's a foul. If it's a bookable foul, it's a bookable foul. It doesn't matter when it is. And if I you've got the card out, you've made that decision well, in your head. He hadn't got the card out, but he was reaching for it. And I think this is this body language thing again, isn't it? I thought to, I said to my colleague at the side of it, he's in the book for this. Mm-hmm. It's going to be one of his earliest bookings in a game, you know. And he got away with it. It wasn't a very bad foul, but it was, you know, uh, uh, it was 50-50 bookable. And, you, you know, you're going to see that in the game. You know, on another day, on another pitch, he would have been booked for it. 
So, so, I, just, I want to amplify what Clive says. I like, I, un, I understand like referees make mistake. I, you, I'm pretty supportive of referees, and mm. I understand that referees make mistake as much as the players do as well. And I totally, I totally give a concession for that. And that's part and parcel of the game. And I'm, I totally understand that. And, <clears throat> uh, but it just, it, I think, just it so happened yesterday. It, 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 from our perspective, I think it, it, it made such a huge talking point that it, it kind of, it kind of grayed and shrouded the game from, from our, our perspective. But, um. But yeah, for me, yeah. it def it definitely it definitely changed the course of the game from from definitely from my perspective. Uh, but as you've already alluded to, you you kind of think that maybe it was uh, it, it opened the game up more attackingly and maybe uh, changed the course of the game for good. I mean, <laughs> well, I, I don't know about that. I think it, it changed the way that Mansfield's positive positivity could be deployed. I mean, mm. we came out in the second half a better team, um, I thought. And um, that didn't mean that you guys didn't have your chances. You did, and and and, and that's a credit to the quality of the, your teamwork and, and work ethic. But we we had, I believe, the better of the second half, as you guys had the better of the first half. Mm -hmm. um, and that's good for football, you know. I mean, anybody, any neutral, when neither of us, none of us are neutral, you're you're very partisan about your club, and therefore you're going to be less tolerant of the rubber. Oh, the of green. course, yeah. We all yeah. have our tinted glasses. Absolutely. On green, and I think if it had been at Phil Mill and the same thing happened to us, we'd have been up in the air about it as well. But the the the, the game itself, I think, was a credit to League Two. I, I really do. And if anybody yeah. was wanting to watch League Two for the first time and had seen that match, they'd have said how impressive they thought the standard was. Um, and I don't believe either team will be uh, anywhere short of the uh, the winning line at the end of the season. So I think uh, in that respect, I'm happy to come away with a point. I hate, before hate, the game, I hate too many draws, but, you know, so. you'll look back at the end of the season and say, what if that draw had only been a win? You know, well, last season, <laughs> Mansfield missed out in the playoffs by a goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could have been a goal anywhere. <laughs> Excuse me. Just to finish off the whole furore around the booking, I think what added to the frustration for for Jules fans as well, Reese, and it comes back to consistency. Literally two minutes later, I think it was Macaulay Bond got upended. Player just went straight through the back of him. Scott Malone takes a quick free kick. He takes it from the wrong place. I've got no issue with that. It's a good ten yards away from where the foul has been committed. But he then gets booked for protesting, which is fine if he said something out of turn again. But it comes back to consistency because he's pulled us up for taking a free kick from the wrong place. Yet Mansfield, not 20, 120 seconds earlier, have scored a free kick that's been taken from very much the wrong place as well. Frustratingly, you got that decision correct, which is, do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I, get, I get that. He got in isolation. Yeah. He got that bit correct because he's made yeah. us take it from the right place and he's booked Scott from Malone for saying something. But if he's yeah. allowing one to do, he can't surely... It's got to be the same for both teams. Which two two wrongs won't right. make a right. That's the problem. And I think, it, to his credit, that he didn't allow the pressure he must have felt himself under after that controversial decision to go for a balancing act. It would have been I dead admit, easy if... I said, I, said, yeah. I said second half, someone, if they get touched in the box, just go over because... But It would have been very easy for him to say, but this is a chance to put some money back in their pot here because I've, I've stolen it down the other end. He didn't do that. I think mm -hmm. he, he he did what he felt was right on the day. I don't think he was in any way biased. I thought the ultimately his only problem was an overall inag inadequ inadequacy mm -hmm. uh, arising from a lack of experience at this level. And I think that's that's it. And I don't really want to talk too much more about the referee because, as as, as my colleague beneath me said, you know everybody has a go at the referees. You know all the best best referees are in the stands, don't you? Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. And the best and all the best, managers, all the best players are in the stands, yeah, aren't they? Absolutely. I yeah, get that yeah. entirely. Yeah, but just as an aside, um, and hopefully a, a segue away from this, we, your, where the away seated stands are, uh, seated fans are at your ground, we share the stand, don't we? I mean, there's a bit of a gap between us, and yeah. what you'd normally expect to be moderate fans, uh, your moderate Jules fans. Uh, and there was an old gentleman. Uh, he was an absolute animal. <laughs> he, he might be the gentleman that you can hear on the match replay. There's I don't know, but he was, there, yeah. he was like the worst yeah. teenager you could ever have. But he must have been 80. <laughs> and he was, he was in the end, on the way out, he was giving everybody the uh, signal. And uh, the steward had to escort him out at the end of the game. See, there's, there's a line. How there, embarrassing is that? I get, I get banter and that type of thing, but I, I, I don't get why people have to cross the line and... I mean, it's, it could be, it should be there, fairly good natured, you know, mm -hmm. seasoned fans just having a go at each other. That's fine, you know. Mm -hmm. but, but I detest fans that spent all of their time baiting the other fans rather than watching the bloody game. Yeah. 
Yeah, you paid I your money. Go and do that. If you want to fight, go and, I don't know, join a boxing club or something like that. <laughs> anyway, half time came and everyone was able to sit down and pick the bones out of what had happened in the first 45 minutes before we went and did it all again. Um, I think there was a half chance for the Jules early in the second half. I think um, foul on Bon, wide on the left. Conor Mahoney flung in a free kick that got cleared to Charlie Alexander. He made a fairly decent contest. I'm not sure whether it was going in, but but Flint had to do his job and, and block it, and it went out for another set play. Just to balance things out shortly afterwards. And I will say, just to expand on it quickly, I thought that the bookings in general play, the referee got correct. I thought the one for Coleman, with the benefit of watching the highlights, was a yellow card. The one for Johnny Williams, he loses possession, he runs in front of his man and brings him down, is correct. Um, there might be one that I want to talk about right near the end. Um, but I think Shadogi for us, again, got a yellow card, which was deserved. Um, then there was a big chance for Mansfield, Clive. Um, we turned over possession in the middle of the park. Uh, Lucas Aikens did really well to hold it up and turn and run towards goal and release Ollie Clark, I think it was. Really good ball across the box. And I think it was George Maris. Just looked slightly off balance and on the stretch as he made contact and it went just wide or just over. It, that it was over stretching. And as a result, he was leaning back into the yeah. kick and it, it just threw elevation into it. Um, he's one of the, He and Clark are, are one of the two players that we would look to to score from situations like that. And they have done in the past. But, you know, it, it didn't, you know. I, I have to say that I thought our better chance was the one where your goalkeeper came out and smothered the ball. Uh, yeah, you had a couple of other good ones. We did. We made period. we made some territory, and we 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 actually mm. used it well. And I don't think our manager Clough has got a great deal to to moan about his players for. I thought their their efforts and applications were fine. Uh, just on the subject of bookings, our player Keeler Dunn lost possession down the right side of the field and chased after your player. I don't know who it was. That's and he had, a nibble, at, he had a nibble playing, at him yeah. twice before eventually, you know. Maris, he, had, Maris had a nibble at him as well, if you watch the yeah. highlights back as well. And it was it was quite right. He should have been booked. In fact, I feared, from my point of view, that he might get sent off. Mm. But, uh, you know, these... <laughs> My biggest frustration there is the player shouldn't even have been doing it. The guy was running into a non-dangerous area. Why why get yourself a card for that? You know, people who get cards on the halfway line, it just drives me mad. And 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 when you when a player's got nowhere to go except down to the corner, wait for a support from the rest of the team, don't clout him there. If you're gonna take one for the team, make it worthwhile. Well, I'll come to you, Reese, when we get to that period of the game there, because, yeah, it's definitely something that I wanted to talk about. Mm. Like I say, it was probably the only decision in the second half, to be fair, that, that was slightly contentious or controversial. Um, Mansfield were having the better of the second half. Like, we bossed the first 35 minutes up to the equaliser, um, and then Mansfield came into the game. They probably had 25, 35 minutes of the second half, and then we came back into it towards the end. So it was it was almost a, a mirror image of, of the first half. Um they had another, I think we had a half chance. There was a Mahoney shot got spilled by Christy Pym and, and Aidan Flint done really well to get there just in front of Macaulay Bond because otherwise it was a tap in for 2 1. We've mentioned the Johnny Williams um, yellow card that was correct. I did write a couple of notes about, I'm not sure who the co commentary team is for Mansfield, but they felt very much like fans rather than being impartial. Um, constantly going on about how they'd got us rattled and how they were spectacular. I just thought it was a little bit over the top, but that's just a little tangent, a little bit of me moaning. I probably wouldn't have mentioned it if we'd won the game. Um, and then, as Clive's already alluded to, Mansfield's massive chance. It was a really good ball played over, I think, right to left. And I think Cargill's the one that gets the flick on. It drops into the box for Keylor Dunn. Jake Turner has to make a decision quickly to get out, and he does get out really quick and blocks it, mm. I think, with his chest. And then Ethan Coleman and... Turner block the rebound. I think Mansfield then recycle it again. Another ball comes into the box. I think Shay Alexander chucks his body in front of one. We we were under the cosh. Like there was they had a half hour spell, and I'd say probably for 15 minutes of that, we were absolutely pinned back in our own third and, and really struggling. And it was a case of having to constantly take one for the team in terms of chucking your head or your body in front of everything that Clive had mentioned right at the beginning of the show, that both teams did really well. And this was our period where we had to do it on numerous occasions. I just want to say on this as well, what, I mean, you, actually, this is where I unfortunately regret not being in the stands myself because there was so much, so many events happening between the 50th minute up until about the 60, 61st, where Mansfield were, were really on top of us. 
And I don't know who runs the iFollow accounts or press the buttons, but I felt like I was watching the game through replays and missed opportunities because there was so much happening. Yeah. And it, from an iFollow fan perspective, anyone watching uh, through iFollow will know exactly what I mean. I know because a couple of times they were still commentating and they'd missed the next phase of play because they were still showing a replay of the previous phase, yeah. Exactly. And and that's a very frustrating thing to be watching because ultimately we're paying for watching the game live. I don't want to pay it, I want to watch it vicariously for replays because you missed the initial one. Mm-hmm. And this is me having a pop at either. But as a result, it actually makes it very difficult for me to remember all the all the, the possession, all the attacks that Mansell had in that period because it, it, it's kind of it, it's inconsistent. It wasn't linear for me. But what I think I can conclude is that uh, Jake Turner did excellently well for at this period and, and and I think Masterson and Oji as well just to hold that back line to to to, to stop Mansell from putting back of the net because arguably that's the period of play where most Mansell supporters will probably say they should have got a goal themselves. Mm-hmm. And, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. I think we made a change. Sorry, I'm just writing another note down there. We made a change shortly after there, Reese, on the 63rd minute, and that was Johnny Williams and Dom Jeffries. Their legs had hmm. started to go. I think we said it in the ground. Clive clearly noticed it as well. They were both running on fumes to a degree. So that was George Lapsley and Jaden Clark that came on to replace them. So there was no change to the system, really. Jaden went to the left-hand side, and, and George went and played in his favourite number 10 role. Then there was another big chance. And I thought Brady Cargill was, was instrumental in a lot of stuff that, that Mansfield did really well. Not maybe noticing it live but when you watch the highlights back and he was instrumental in this phase of players where he makes a really good tackle on Sean Williams who'd run over halfway and was threatening to get us into a dangerous position ourselves <laughs> not only does he make the tackle he then gets up and keeps the ball as well and we've plenty of times this season waxed lyrical about Scott Malone's ability to play balls through the lines from the left touch on he does it superbly Cargill I think it releases um, Maris or, or Reed or someone galloping over halfway there's a through ball that gets played. I'm not sure whether Keeler does offside from the initial phase, but there's a touch from Scott Malone, which then makes that point redundant. Jake Turner then does absolutely brilliant for there. For me, this is a better save than the one that he stood yeah. up to because Keeler Dunn's got that confidence of scoring earlier in the game. He's got that confidence of having a very good season overall. He's got options. He can probably slide it under him. He can go either side if he wants to go round him. <clears throat> he picks to go to the outside. Jake has to get that absolutely spot on, and he does, and he comes out, and he falls, and gets a massive hand on it, and we clear. Um, but again, it was it was another sign that this spell was 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 not quite over in terms of of Mansfield Town dominance. I think Keeler Dunn doesn't like too many choices. I think he is <laughs> an instinctive. Likes to be instinctive, yeah. He's instinctive. Yeah. There was one a week or so ago. He got nobody. It was like he got half a pitch to himself, and only the goalkeeper to beat, and a half an hour to make a decision. And yeah, he ended up doing none of the right things at all. It just it just petered out. Whereas if he'd been under enormous pressure, he'd have probably scored the goal. Just going back to I follow for a second. I mean, my experience of I follow came about during the COVID crisis when we were all locked out of the grounds. And for that, I was intensely uh, thankful of it because it enabled me to maintain my interest in the game. Mm-hmm. And actually, it made me more keen to visit away grounds as a result of watching both home and away on, on iFollow. But it's very myopic. You're looking, yeah. at, the, you're looking at the whole game through yeah. one lens all the time. <laughs> yeah. And you don't see some of the important and very interesting elements of the game that are off camera. I'm not talking about disciplinary things. I'm just about shape mm-hmm. and support and, and players doing the things that matter by drawing other players out of the equation and allowing for space to be created as a result. You don't see any of that. And no. as a consequence, some of the best players don't get the credit for it if you only see them on iFollow. Which is, Lucas which Aikens is, all... is our example of that. He works his socks off every game and sometimes you never see him on a camera because he's actually, his best work is away from the ball. Where the game's actually taking Absolutely. place. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it is what we've got. Unfortunately, we don't have the luxury of multi camera facilities that the uh, we take for granted in the premiership but um it, it it really is difficult for guys like you that rely on it to avoid that sort of circumstance when the producer who presumably is producing 10 at a time is yeah. deciding which uh, bits to hold and show over again 
Yeah, and I want to kind of add that the reason that uh, it's it's nice to have that perspective because obviously the, the camera pretty much follows the ball the whole game. There's not much of, of of off the ball play which you're alluding to, and actually it's quite that's why it's quite interesting when I talk with Matt about any issues. We have two completely different yeah. perspectives that hopefully we can meld together to create a, hopefully a balanced viewpoint for the game. But yeah, I totally take your point, and I've suffered it for four years. This uh, sort of one one viewed approach, one dynamic, um, one dimensioned approach to, to I follow. And you have to t- take a lot of what you see of a pinch of salt when you can't see a lot of things happening in the peripherals. Absolutely. And it's exactly the same reason that I saw the the controversial situation differently to you guys at the rain amend. Because you're you know, the perspective was, a, angle, yeah. was 180 degrees different and you were closer yeah. and I wasn't and all the rest of it. And then when I looked on the television highlights last night, I saw things I hadn't seen before. Um but you know the referee doesn't have that advantage, does he? At the no. end of the day, of course, so. no, yes, he gets, he does, he gets a split second to make it. And like I say, that's why I've come on here and said that having disagreed in the ground and thinking that the free kick was soft and it wasn't a yellow card, having the benefit of watching it from a different angle, it was clearly a free kick and clearly a yellow card. It was the period after that that I was frustrated about. But let's not get into that. I don't want to be. No, no, we've done that one, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, there was another chance for for Mansfield Town. I think it was Lewis this time. I'm not sure whether he went with the wrong foot. It looks like he stretched with his right foot and almost toe punted it wide when he, he might have been better having a touch and trying to use his left foot. But it was another chance that, that came and went. Um, from our point of view, the game then settled down finally, Reese, because we was at about 70 minutes or so now and, and the game had just been absolutely breathless. Um, I've written down, not a lot happened. I think um, oh, we had a corner. That made me laugh as well. The commentators called it ridiculous and said that Jules hadn't even appealed, we was literally right in front of it. And the ball clearly hit Aidan Flint and went out for a corner. So that was the correct call yeah. for me. There was a half chance. I think Alexander crossed, got headed up in the air. Malone had a touch, volleyed over. Um, and then we made our change, our final one, as it turned out to be. And that was Ashley Naderson on for Connor Mahoney, mm-hmm. um, who I think had run himself to a standstill and had been very good again. Um Clive's already alluded to this point, so I want to get your take on it and my take on it, this this yellow card for, for Keeler Dunn, because he has the initial shot and it gets blocked. And then we know how quick Ashley Naderson is. And he gallops over halfway. Like I've said, you can see Jules Maris clearly on the highlights as a swipe gets nowhere near him because he's not quick enough. Naderson then gets to the halfway line. Keeler Dunn has his first swipe, doesn't get near him because he's not quick enough to keep up. Oh, sorry, he does get him. Um... Naderson stumbles and tries to keep his feet. Third time lucky from a Mansfield point of view because he just absolutely wipes him out again. There is no attempt in them three occasions to play any part of the football. I get taking one for the team. Clive's already alluded to that. But if you do it, do it. Guys, excuse me a second. No worries. You've got, you've got to do it when you're um, maybe defending a player that's, yeah. that's through on goal and that type of thing. Is the call correct? Should it just be a yellow? Because there's two offences, both of which are a yellow card by the law. You are deliberately mm-hmm. trying to play play the player, which is a professional foul. So if George Maris does it, should be a yellow card. Yep. If Keeler Dunn's two instances are a minute or two apart, similar to Diego Jota in the Liverpool-Tottenham game yesterday evening, he's made two fouls separately, two minutes apart, two yellow cards, red. Why is it different for Keeler Dunn? It's a funny is it one, isn't it? The close proximity, is that what saved him? But is that right again by the letter of the law? But it's, it's interesting. Uh, they are, for me, that even though it's the same phase of play, are they two, two independent in, um Clive, we're just back on the, the yeah. Keeler Dunn booking uh, and whether it should be a red. Um, we're talking about time elapsed between the two swipes. Yeah. We've referenced Diogo Jota's red card for Liverpool. Yeah. Two offences similar, two minutes apart, equals two yellows. Why should this be different? Well, it's to... because you're being unrealistic. You're expecting referees to be consistent. <laughs> Back to you, no, Bruce. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I mean, it, 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 and we've, well, now you've put those glasses on. Now you're at, no, I can see the, see the point there, but like... like you know, if we look back at it, yeah, for me, even though it's the same phase of play, they're two separate incidents. So I, it it wouldn't have surprised me if the rest said yellow for that, yellow for that, you're off. But I think, you know, I I wonder if how many. I I reckon you probably get about twenty five percent of referees might have done that. I think, but I I don't know. But it, from I, if I if 
if I'm refereeing that game in that heat at the moment, do I, I, you know, even even a part of me probably goes, I'll probably just hide behind one yellow card of that. Doesn't necessarily make, is it the right decision? I don't know. Um, but in an objective sense, they are, it's one phase of play. They're two separate incidents. He had one hack, didn't quite get an Addison down. So it's an attempted foul, mm-hmm. uh, completely off the ball, essentially, as it were. And then had a second go, and that had a bit more of an impact. Mm-hmm. So they're two separate instances. Are both of them yellow cards? I mean, that's up for interpretation. But from an objective standpoint, there were two fouls in one in one phase. And you could argue, I would I tell you what, it wouldn't have surprised me if two yellow cards came out for it. And I would have gone, I can see that. And if it was the other way around, I would have gone, yeah, okay, I can see that as well. I genuinely think that. But yeah, I think probably a quarter of referees would probably give two bookings in, in that phase of play. I think you've got that about right. At least some of us did. <laughs> but again, we're not the important ones, Clive, are we? Us three no, sitting here it, talking, right? unfortunately. <laughs> I think uh, unbalanced, at, um, it, I, I as a referee would have gone through a yellow, I think. It's least contentious. It's, yeah, it's almost a safe option, is it? You've given the free kick to the team that's had the foul committed against them, but you're trying to keep 11 versus 11. There, there ought to be an intermediate punishment, like you get a yellow card and a slapped face, because that's what it wanted. <laughs> If only, eh? Uh, but you'd have 6,000 fans wanting to carry out the slap, <laughs> I'd imagine. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um, shortly after that, there was a couple more sort of half... No, there was a half chance for Jules. Jaden Clark done really well and got down the left. Absolutely skinned Aikens for pace and, and cut it back and it was defended well again. The big chance. And I didn't realise how big it was again, going back to, to different angles. Because I actually called corner right at the end of injury time. There's a ball played in from the from our right-hand side. So it was an in-swinging corner from Sean Williams. And I actually thought live in the ground, because my view was impeded by a body of players, that it was another corner. It's a big chance for Ashley Nadderson, Reese. Mm. He just gets in between the two players and gets his head on it. And it just sort of loops over the net and, and into the front row of the Rainham end, unfortunately. But yeah, didn't realise what an opportunity that actually was in real time. No, it was a, it was a close one. I think it, I think he'd be very disappointed with himself not at the target of that. And I have to say, if he hit the target, it hits the back of the net. I don't think anyone's stopping it from that. Yeah, close. I think so. Just such of the, the distance between him and the goal, would you'd say that Pim would have very Absolutely. little chance to react? It's like when uh, Lapsley scored against Morecambe. He's that close to the goal. No matter where he puts it, it's going to go to the back of the net. It's that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I think to get it over the bar, probably from his perspective, is a bigger achievement. It's actually a lot harder to do, I imagine. But yeah. it's one of those things, though, unfortunately. And I think if you give it to him another 10 times, he puts in the back of the net eight times. And it's just one of those things. And like you say, it's a bigger chance than probably what was uh, what we saw from my view and from your view. Um, but yeah, I think it, he'll be disappointed with himself not to have found the target there. Absolutely. I, I think your team and you as supporters should take encouragement from the chance being made mm-hmm. um, and I think we should both teams should be encouraged by the chances that we made collectively yesterday uh, there are games when you get three chances and score three goals and there are games where you make 20 chances and score none uh, yesterday was somewhere in between um, and hence the previous comment about it being an enjoyable game to watch if you're impartial mm-hmm. absolutely uh, I enjoyed the game anyway, and I'm, I'm old enough now to be able to tolerate di- disappointment in a way. As a younger person, I couldn't do it. Um, but but it, um, if we'd have lost yesterday, I'd have no great ring in the hands from my point of view. We're going to lose this unbeaten run at some point. If I'm going to lose it. it to anybody, I'd rather it be someone like Gillingham away. <clears throat> yeah, and you mean that with the, the greatest respect. You don't want to do it to a Sutton at home or something like that. No, no. I mean, we, 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 we have a, we have a history of doing yeah. exactly that. You know, yeah. we beat the best teams and flounder against the, the minnows, as it were. But uh, there aren't many minnows this year in this league, are there? No, they're not. <laughs> no, there's not. <laughs> very, very competitive league. Any one of about, I think, 14 teams, but maybe 15, should have ambition for promotion this year. I've said I've said this and I keep saying the same thing. I did my season preview and I said there's probably six there's probably two thirds of the division think they can get in the top seven and at least half think they can probably get in the top three. So there's going to be some really annoyed fans. And the other thing to draw comfort from is look where you were last year at this point. Oh yeah. 
absolutely. <laughs> oh yeah. Because you come over, you come, you come to our place and rolled us over very comfortably last. It season. was a very right. comfortable win. You were nowhere to be. You, 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 know, you were a very average side last year, and yet, we weren't that um, good. We weren't even that, 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 that good. Less generous. <laughs> at, our, at our place, you were a lot better. You know, but Manchester. Yeah, but... To, you know, but remember, Manchester won twelve away last year, which is really good. I mean, it's a home form really that we. We look back on the same week. If we'd only done a little bit better, we'd have been up there. But mm. on balance, we didn't deserve to get promotion. And that's where you have to be on these things. The table never lies, unfortunately, does it? That's the trouble. As much as you can look at games and moments that, that maybe but the, there is a, you know, there's always things that stick in the throat. And one of them is Salford. I hate them. I uh, hate what Salford <laughs> stands for. I hate Milton Keynes Dons for what they stand for. Um, and I, I do think, uh, uh, as a northerner, I, I rue the fact that good traditional teams like Rochdale and Hartlepool and, and uh, Oldham have dropped off the map. And I look at the Harrogates and the Sutton United and think, oh, are they are they a, a good replacement? I'm not sure. But as you say, you get there on merit, and uh, whether you've got 1,000 fans or 100,000 fans. We, 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 I mean, your ground is, I think, quite a nice ground, by the way. Uh, Mansfield's ground has a real problem in that it's inadequate mm -hmm. uh, in terms of accommodation, the, the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, we have effectively a three-sided ground, one stand of which is de dedicated to visiting fans. We've got 1,700 out of about nine, a maximum of 9,000 uh, seats. In fact, in practice, it's probably 8,500 seats. So this year, we've sold 5,500 season, ticket uh, season tickets. Mm -hmm. And we therefore have to, we've got about 1,000 seats for floaters. And we're going to have games when we deny home fans who haven't got season tickets access to the ground. And we'll have a 1,700 capacity at a way stand with 29 Sutton United fans in it. Yeah, so you point. That's real so frustration. Point, yeah. That's nothing yeah. to do with Sutton United fans. They no. are what they are. It's our ground has not got the design flexibility to accommodate small numbers of fans. So that you can increase we, the yeah. numbers of home support. Because we're not allowed to deny them access as away fans. You know, the, the, the FA rules don't uh, the FL rules don't allow for that. But anyway, we, that's my that's my moan. Well, you, could get, you could get yesterday. You could get yesterday's ref to sort it out, and he'd be able to give you. Ex I'm joking. Yeah. We, or, we did it with one stand. Or if, or if you want, Clive, you could take our temporary stand with you, and you can have it at the side of your pitch. Yeah, you can have the top if, tier, if, only we got, if only the footprint would allow it. It's a really <laughs> horrible situation we've got. But I don't want to moan anymore about my. No. That, that's my moan for home fans, not for a, for a visit, visiting other no, people. But I'd imagine it's a frustration that's probably shared up and of down course. the country at different clubs, isn't it? So um, it's, it's something. To, to be looked at, I guess, and, and yeah, we could probably do another episode on on that. But um, well, I'll if probably... you do, invite me along. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, just a couple of questions before we we start wrapping this up, Reese. I put for me Mansfield Town Comp to be the best team we face this season in terms of of what they do and how they do it. Um, I think Neil's alluded to it in in a couple of interviews this week. They're they're a lot further along their process in terms of that squad that's been built over two or three seasons. I know you lose and tweak along the way, but generally it's it's a project that's it's well down the road in making. I thought we matched them, though, overall. They had spells, we had spells. We had a big period on top, they had a big period on top second half. Um I thought it was a really, really good game. If we if we if we take away the layer of onions that is the referee and the contentious decision, if you just look at it as the football, it was a bloody good football match. And like Clive said, it really, really was a good advert for League Two football. And this is what I want. To, this is what I want to reiterate and amplify what Clive has said. There's two two takeaways for me from this game. One, well, actually, there's three. One, we were competitive against a really good Mansfield side. Excellent. That's really good. Uh, secondly, it is a fantastic advert for League Two football. As a mm -hmm. neutral watching that, you're thinking, "Wow, the quality down at this level is 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 good." I mean, I've actually, I've been to a couple of of German regional games, which is equivalent to four uh, the, the League Two. And yeah. the quality in League Two in England is is higher than I think even the quality in the National League is higher than some of Division Four in Germany, and and that's a testament to what the pyramid system is is in England. And, and the League, League Two football yesterday was a fantastic battle; it was entertaining, and it was good quality on 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 show. And finally, and I think I think Clive mentioned it again at the end of the game, everyone you could see gave pretty much a hundred percent. They collapsed on the floor either in frustration, <clears throat> or in the fact that they were knackered, or a combination of both. And that's probably the reality. And that is, as a Gillingham fan, I'm, I'm sure as a Mansfield Tan fan as well, that, that that is what you want as a fan. You want to see entertaining football as much as possible, but you want to see your team give 110% because that, for me, as a fan, is satisfying to go home with. If you've done everything you can to, 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 do, to try and win the game, then for me, 
there's nothing more to it as a fan as, in terms of satisfaction as that. And that's exactly what I saw yesterday. And I really noticed it as soon as the game ended. I saw, a, I saw, I think it was OG Masterson and maybe Colburn just go on the floor. And I thought, yeah, I, I bet. <laughs> I bet. That's, that's, yeah, that's it was one hell of a battle. It was a, I mean, it was a, it was a footballing game yesterday. In other words, the quality was on the feet, on the grass, and with, you know, and that's where it should be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to be successful, I think you have to have that level of quality to play like that. But equally, and it's most important, you need to have the ability to grind out dirty little horrible games mm. to win ugly, as they say. And we played against Barrow at home the other week, and we won one nil. And it we it was hard hard work. They had their battle plan, and they played it well. And uh, it took us ages to break it down. Eventually, we managed to get a goal. And then, you know, it, there was a huge sigh of relief. And we left that ground, left the ground that day thinking we'd won 8 0. It was that important to us. Mm. And to get it, if you've got the knack, I mean, at one point you were you were the 1 0 team, weren't you, at the start of this season? <laughs> if you yeah, can do well. that, if you win every game 1 0, it's paradise, isn't it? But we, uh, you, we know that's not going to happen. You have to be able to mix it. And you know we'll we have a different strategy when we play Bradford City than when we play Gillingham because mm-hmm. we know the two different sorts of sides. Yeah, mm. and I have to say that is a compliment to Gillingham. Thank you. <laughs> Thank to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, I have to say this, and I, I really need to move on if you allow me to, chaps. I've um, I've been along. I mean, I've watched football for a, to, longer than you guys have been on the planet, and. Uh, you know, I have a social media catch line that says, after my name, 50 years of ruined weekends. <laughs> and that's what League Two football is all about. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, uh, and I would much prefer, and it's a silly thing to say, I guess, I much prefer to watch games like we uh, were entertained to yesterday than Liverpool and Arsenal and, and some of the, what I believe to be beautifully sterile games. And, yeah, and, and I think... A... I do watch uh, Premiership football on television because there is entertainment value in it. But if I had to choose between one and the other, I know what Absolutely. I'd rather do. Yeah, I'll totally agree. Referees, totally agree. even referees like yesterday, taken into account. Well, because then if you watch the Premier League, then it's just some bloke in a truck that you're moaning about rather than the fellow on the pitch. So you still moan. So <laughs> it's, Can you imagine anyway. what VAR would have done yesterday? Oh, God. You would have blown <laughs> up. They'd, they'd have still been <laughs> deciding. Yeah, we'd all still be there waiting, unfortunately. Um <laughs> Reese, one final question, and then and then yeah. to Clive quickly, just to, to finish up. Mansfield, where are they finishing this season? <laughs> Top seven for me, comfortably, if at worst. Oh, that's a good question. I I said uh, I I I'm going to. Do you know what? I'm going to give an exact position. I think Mansfield will be third. I think they're going to go up all toes. I was impressed yesterday. One thing I'm going to add to that as well is that I was looking at some of the statistics of Mansfield. They're scoring a lot of goals. They're not really conceding much. And I think that mm. is a, a good recipe for, for a oh, team that, that 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 can be at the top of the table, actually. But I definitely think top three for Mansfield. Um, they're, they're, I think they're one of the very few teams that are doing a, a score, a crane charge of scoring goals and not letting many in. They do, they do that, both sides of it very well, don't they? Exactly. And for me, that's 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 promotion uh, approach form. <laughs> Absolutely. If, and Clive, if, if, same question. Yeah. Sorry, Clive, same question to you. Gilles, where do you see Gilles finishing this season? Playoffs, I think. Um, I think that's that's being cautious. You, with, a, with a tailwind, you, you might find yourself in the top three. A lot depends on a lot depends, doesn't it? Uh, of course, yeah. But if you go back to the yeah. question about Mansfield, we would be incredibly disappointed not to be in the automatics this year, given where the progress we've made, the mm-hmm. investment that's been made. And... Uh, it will be the cluffs last year if we don't get promoted because there's nowhere else for him to go after this. So I think this year we we all we all want to finish. But I'd like to say we finish as champions. So I'd, I'd happily take three. I'd happily take three. I don't want yeah, the playoffs. I've had no joy in playoffs over the years. No, well, yeah, you uh, never, yeah, but I mean, you never know. Right. The way things are going, it could be us and Jill's in the playoffs. Yeah, there you go. Oh, God. Well, I don't get that ref. <laughs> I'm going to end it there, gents. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you very much, both to Clive and Reese. I will quickly go there before we go off on one again. Uh, like I say, it's been really enjoyable. There was, there was plenty to talk about. It's probably been the most contentious refereeing decision we've had to talk about, Reese, since we joined, so. uh, since we've started being joined by opponents, fans. So it's been really good to pick the brains of both of you. 
Thank you, Jules fans and Mansfield fans. If you have watched up to this point, like I would say, it is really, really appreciated. Please go and hit that subscribe button. Please go and press the like button as well. Tell your friends and family about us. Please keep doing all that you do because it really is appreciated. Um, as I've said, I will put the links to Clive and the Mansfield Matters um, details in the description at the bottom of the video. I won't need to do Reese's because you're all subscribed already. No midweek. Oh, yes, there is a midweek game this week, but I shall not be travelling to crew, unfortunately, so we'll have to make do with I follow and the same perspective as Reese. Hopefully, middle of the week, we'll be back with an MK Dons fan. I am back with an MK Dons fan because I know that MK Dons fan is already. It'll be Jonathan Harry. So looking forward to that one. And then, of course, next Saturday, we'll be back inside the Priestfield Stadium for another Match Day Live. Until then, I hope your week isn't too stressful. And up the Jills. <laughs>